At 2150, the Colossus entered the Polaris system and neutralized the NTD Andronicus and the NTC Camisard, securing the jump node from Epsilon Pegasi. Meanwhile, the 13th of Sudan battle group has destroyed the NTD Cyrene and gained foothold in Sirius. Intelligence reports that Admiral Bosch and his elite guard have withdrawn to the rebel enclave of Regulus. Command anticipates a total Allied victory in less than 30 days. Dr. Hargrove's task force has determined that the subspace portal in Gamma Draconis was constructed by the Ancients, an extinct civilization discovered near the end of the Great War. Artifacts excavated in the Altair system contain data that enabled the GTA and PVN to destroy the SG Lucifer. Many Terran and Vesudan systems once belonged to the Ancients Empire, which the Sheevans obliterated 8,000 years ago. The portal has been renamed Nosos after the Earth's Minoan civilization. Intelligence has learned that Bosch acquired ancient materials from an excavation site in the Deneb system. These artifacts somehow enabled Bosch to locate and activate the Nosos portal. This explains the presence of the Admiral's command ship in the Deneb asteroid belt. Bosch then sent the NTC Trinity into Gamma Draconis to activate the portal, which lured the Sheevans into that system. We do not know Bosch's motives or what the Sheevans are doing in the nebula. Allied scientists studying the portal remain optimistic about the potential for this technology. Five to ten years, we might be able to restore contact with Earth or create new jump nodes to unexplored regions of the galaxy. For this reason, the portal must remain open for as long as possible. Command has issued a standing order to destroy the device should a full-scale invasion be imminent. The destruction of the Ravana has intensified Shivan activity in the nebula. The Shivan fleet appears to be smaller than the Armada we defeated three decades ago, and our improved technology gives us a tactical advantage. However, with the possibility of uncharted jump nodes leading to more Shivan infested systems, we cannot know with any certainty the full extent of the enemy force. A miscalculation on our part could unleash the second Sheevan invasion of our home systems. The Aquitaine will spearhead the next phase of our exploration and containment operation in the Nebula. To help us achieve our objectives, the Alliance has developed new technologies, including advanced warning and control systems, or AWACS, and gas mining vessels to gather deuterium for our fusion reactors. Prototypes of these new tactical weapons and fighters will be deployed pending successful completion of field tests. The 134th Barracudas will be conducting these combat exercises near the Gamma Draconis jump node. Two next generation weapons are now available, the Morning Star and the EMP missile. The GTWML-70 Morningstar improves upon the flail gun developed during the Great War. Recent advances in high temperature optics enable the primary focusing chamber of the Morningstar to produce a more coherent charge. Though an energy weapon, the Morningstar has a powerful kinetic effect on its target. The EMP missile interferes with the electronic systems of vessels caught within the blast radius of the warhead. Detonation scrambles targeting data and jams communications. Tactically, the EMP is an effective anti-bomber weapon. It prevents these craft from acquiring aspect lock and temporarily shuts down the guidance and propulsion systems of warheads in flight. Welcome to the 134th Barracudas, pilot. I'm Commander Vinci, your squadron leader. The 134th is a combat evaluation unit, or CEU, which means we're among the first to test new ships and weapons in the field. While we carry out our missions, engineers will gather data on the systems we've been assigned to test. In this mission, our primary objective is to escort two Triton-class freighters, the Erin Pura and the Vauban. 
They will enter the nebula at the Gamma Draconis node and travel to their waypoint, where they will rendezvous with the GTCV Warspite. Their cargo is the new target acquisition and guidance missile system. The GTA Lucidity will provide AWACS support for this mission. With its powerful sensor array, the Lucidity will transmit targeting data to your fighter, effectively increasing your sensor range. The 134th will be the first to test the system in the nebula. Now keep in mind that the C in CEU stands for combat. These aren't controlled laboratory experiments. Shivan activity has intensified, so you can expect to engage some Maras and Canes out there. If the action gets too intense, call in reinforcements at your discretion. Good luck, pilot. Command, this is Alpha Wing. We are on station at the Gamma Draconis node. We are sending in the transports now, Alpha. We've got company. Lucidity here. The AWACS is coming online. We're picking up hostiles at long range.
Sensors have picked up a Kane class cruiser. Call in Zeta Wing if you require assistance. Breaking to attack.
We'll take it from here. All detected enemy craft have been neutralized. Alpha Wing, return to base. I copy. Engaging jump drive now. Both the Air Impura and the Vauban survived the Shivan ambush. The combat field test of the target acquisition and guidance missile will proceed on schedule. The 134th will be working with the Warspite on this exercise. Command rates the initial deployment of the AWACS a complete success. Our improved sensor capability gave us a tactical advantage we required to respond quickly and decisively to the Shivan attack. Prepare your wing for your next sortie pilot. The TAG missile combat field test begins at 0315.